Welcome to the PhoneArena.com review of the Motorola Razr 2. The Razr 2, as evidenced by the name, is a follow-up to the original Razr, a design icon by any standard, and the most successful handset of all time. In creating the successor, Motorola had no short task in creating a follow-up to the Razr. In style, they have most definitely come through, but often this is at the expense of software. Unlike the original exclusivity of the Razr, the Razr 2 has been launched on every major carrier and today we will review the Motorola V9M as carried by Sprint. There are many design changes to the Razr 2, not the least of which being the unprecedented 2-inch QVGA display found on the outside. At the bottom of the screen, the user will find three icons. These icons will change with each carrier, but with the Sprint version, we can launch the Sprint TV service, the Sprint Music Store, and the camera simply by pressing and holding the outside display buttons. As you can see, the outside is very glossy. This is due to a glass and stainless steel finish. On the back of the phone, you're going to find a soft touch finish, which makes the phone much easier to hold. On the left side of the phone, there's a volume rocker and a multifunction button. At standby, the multifunction button launches the voice command feature. On the right side of the phone, there's a singular camera button. Now we already noted that the soft key on the front of the screen launches the camera, which means that Sprint has chosen to have two buttons on the outside of the phone launch the camera. This duplicity is found on several variants of the Razer and can only be blamed on the carrier. On the back of the phone, as noted, you find a soft touch finish, much like many of the variants of the Q. There is no mechanical button for the battery door. Instead, the user will slide the door up and pop it off. Underneath is found the battery, as well as the micro SD slot. This means that the micro SD slot needs to be accessed by taking the battery out. This is something that is carried over from the original Razer and also something that we would like to see changed. Whereas the original Razer differentiated itself with its thinness, the Razer 2 enters a market where thin is in, and even at under 12 millimeters, it is nowhere near the thinnest handset on the market. Where the Razer 2 will shine is its 2-inch QVGA outside display. Here we will launch the TV application by pressing and holding the icon on the bottom of the screen. The user is rewarded with a nice, quick, haptic feedback. However, the same short vibration is felt when touching the side keys, something we find is unnecessary. As you'll see through this demonstration, the entire Sprint TV application will be launched and controlled without opening the phone. With the display this large, we find this to be a very attractive feature and something that is found on nothing else in the market. The user is able to open the phone and will find the same controls on the inside and then close it again and continue to watch the programming on the outside display. However, there are glitches with this. The left multifunction button, when held, should act as an end button. Indeed, it will close the display. However, when opened, or when trying to launch from the outside, one will find that the application will not again launch. Those familiar with the Motorola Crazer will find themselves right at home with the Razer 2's keypad. You'll find a right and left soft key, a five-way directional pad, the back send and then button, and 12-key dial pad, exactly as it is on the Crazer. In fact, the only difference is that the Crazer's camera key has been replaced with the Razer 2's speakerphone button. While the keypad is crafted with the same slippery stainless steel found on the outside and throughout the phone, there is a raised rubber feel to the separators, the numbers, and the letters which make feeling between the keys relatively easy. Dialing with one hand is not too bad, however, 
For text messages of any length, it is preferred to use two hands as the phone is extremely wide. Above the keypad, one will find a 2.2 inch QVGA display. Like the outside, this display is only 65,000 colors, something we prefer to be 262,000. This would make the display sharper, however, it is bright enough to be seen in direct sunlight, as is the outside. Another drawback is that it is only 2.2 inches, and given the relative real estate of the Razer 2, we would like to have seen at least a 2.5, if not higher. The B9M from Sprint can launch the camera in three different ways. The first is via the touch sensitive control on the outside. The second is from the hard button on the outside. And the third is from the pictures menu in the main menu. In this menu, you can launch the camera, camcorder, and do other picture related options such as check picture mail and view your albums. Here we'll see that the camera loads relatively quickly and the image is captured pretty quickly as well. Color representation is overall pretty good, although indoors it can be a bit muted. In order to take a second picture, the user must hit the back button, which adds some delay for multi-shot functionality. The phone does have a multi-shot mode and users can take two or four pictures in succession. The video can take 320 by 240 videos which, though a little bit choppy, are better than most videos taken by camera phones. Overall, we're pretty pleased with the camera function of the Motorola Razr 2 V9M. The original Razr shook the wireless industry to its core. No longer did the phone have to be large and bulky to include the latest features. Motorola proved that design could be on the forefront. The Razr 2 expands on the original. It's even thinner than the Razr, and gone is the polarizing hump at the bottom. The front is almost a seamless blend of glass and stainless steel with a small 2 megapixel camera sitting atop an unprecedented 2 inch QVGA display. Not only is the display beautiful but it's also functional with the touchscreen buttons at the bottom. When working as it should the Razer is quick and snappy. The Sprint V9M runs a Sprint operating system it's not quite like Verizon's mandated dashboard system, but Sprint definitely does have some commands for the system. Motorola still seems to be having issues with this, and there are plenty of software glitches, which unfortunately detract from the overall experience on the phone. In fact, this front display right now is only staying lit because of a glitch. When programs are closed from the outside display, the user cannot launch them again. Instead, they must restart the phone. The first time we took the phone out of the box, it hung on the startup screen. There have been several times where the phone needed to be reset in order to be used. The Razer 2 V9M has a lot of promise. It definitely is a beautiful phone and has a very solid feature set. However, until Motorola pays a little bit more attention to their software integration, they will continue to struggle with their sales.